It's Bo the 5 tool player. Let's go. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Now Barry Bonds is one of the greatest. Matter of fact, he might just be the greatest baseball player all time. Unfortunately, because of his attachment to the steroid scandal, he isn't in the Hall of Fame and he ain't in the show. But thanks to a dope creation from Dr. Sublime, we have this killer render of Bonds that we can download from the Show 23 roster vault. Sublime had him with 99s across the board, and I understand, but I decided to make his ratings a little more realistic and drop the 42-year-old Bonds on the San Francisco Giants roster. Sorry Michael Conforto, I'm picking up where Barry left off. I'm player locking through the entire 2023 season to see what kind of year I can have with Bonds. This is my first episode of Legend Lock, so Bonds is hitting third in the lineup, just ahead of Mitch Hanniger who is batting clean up. I like that setup. I'm going to take you through the first full month of the season, so let's see if Bonds can get off to a hot start and if the Giants can find themselves in the National League West division title picture. San Francisco starts the season off in the house that Roof built, but quite honestly it's the crib that Aaron Judge is renovating. The 6'8 monster is coming off a historic season that saw him hit more than 60 home runs. Bonds is going to go head-to-head -head with Judge in what is a dream matchup. The opening series went pretty well for Bonds. He had a hit in every game of the three-game series, and that actually took four days to play because they split the days to give them a day off after opening day. I kind of hate it because you're thirsty for baseball at that point. But Bonds went 4-4-11 in the series. Facing the likes of Nestor Cortez, Garrett Cole, and Luis Severino, Bonds hit a filthy 364 with two home runs and three RBI. The first dinger of the season, which came on opening day, was a no-doubter in the upper deck of the new Yankee Stadium. Bonds' second homer of the season wasn't a cheapie either. It landed close to dead center field. And don't look now, but the legend is back. Interleague play continues for the Giants. They travel to the south side of Chicago to take on the White Sox. Bonds didn't strike out a single time against the Yankees in the opening series of the season, but he went down on strikes for the first time against the White Sox. As a matter of fact, Bonds struggled overall in this series as White Sox pitchers held him to just two hits in 10 at-bats. Bonds did manage to hit his third homer of the season in the second game of the series. He hit safely in two of the three games, and he was on base in all three contests as well. However, what was a mild slump at the time dropped Barry's batting average quite a bit. In the third series of the season, the Giants are still playing American League teams, and they are taking on the Kansas City Royals. At least it's time for the home opener. And Barry didn't disappoint the home fans. In the opener, he hit a mammoth home run into McCovey Cove to highlight his two-hit five RBI performance to the delight of Giants fans. I mean he got every last inch of this baseball. Bonds will go deep a second time in the series to push his homer total to five overall as the Giants took two out of three games from the horrible Royals. San Fran is looking decent to start the season after playing 500 baseball on the road in the first two series of the season. Unfortunately, things started to trend downward in the next series and unfortunately for Giants fans, Bonds slump kicked off against the rival Dodgers. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts used the intentional walk heavily during the series to slow Bonds down. How heavily, you might ask? How about four freaking times? Bonds still helped his team during this stretch by getting on base a ton, but his rhythm at the plate seemed to be disturbed, and it was the first series of the year when he didn't hit a home run. As a matter of fact, this would put Bonds into a nasty slump and an epic homer drought. In the next series, Bari and Giants head to the Motor City to face the Detroit Tigers. Now quite honestly, this should have been a good series for Bonds, but it wasn't. Bonds not only found himself on a five-game homer drought, but his batting average dipped to an embarrassing 234. The Tigers were following Dave Roberts is led by intentionally walking Bonds, and Barry couldn't find his rhythm with the GPS late in the series. Barry seemed to show some signs of snapping out of the funk. On Jackie Robinson Day, he had a huge RBI double that propelled the Giants to a win, but still, it's looking ugly for Bonds. The next series, Bonds and the Giants are in Miami to face the Marlins at Lone Depot Park. That ballpark is so huge it feels like you have to hit it with Thor's hammer to hit a home run. But Bonds can be superhero-like at times. 
Barry snaps his home of the streak at 10 games with a moonshot in a game that saw him go to for 5 from the plate. Suddenly there are some signs of life as Bonds is looking like his old self. Or maybe it's his young self. You get what I'm talking about. Barry and the Giants head back home for a four-game set with the Mets and don't look now. Barry has found his groove again. He hit number 7 into McCovey Cove. And that's now his second straight game with a home run after going 10 games without a dinger. On the day, Bonds went 3 for 5. But somehow the Giants wasted Barry's day and lost to the Mets. The good news is Bonds is back trending upward. He went crazy in the series against the Mets. Bonds was 9 for 16 at the plate with two homers making its hate on the year. Barry also raised his batting average to an un-Bonds-like, but still a respectable 291 in the next series. The Giants are hosting the St. Louis Cardinals for a four-game set. Bonds ran a hit streak to a modest eight games, and he stayed hot overall. In the 22nd game of the season, Bonds hit his ninth home run, just out of the reach of Dylan Carlson who was in deep center field at Bush Stadium. Barry is looking good and tearing the cover off the ball again. His batting average is now back over 300 for the first time since the opening series of the season. In the final series in April, Bonds and the Giants face off with perhaps the best team in the National League, even without the suspended Fernand Otatis Jr. The San Diego Pod Rays came into the series with the Giants with an unreal 22-6 record so far. However, Bonds made it known early in this series that he was going to be a force to be reckoned with. He hit his National League leading 10th home run of the season in the 25th game of the year to spark San Francisco. Now through the first month of the season, Bonds and Padres star Juan Soto are in an exciting battle for National League MVP despite the mid-month lump. Bonds finished April hitting 306 with 10 home runs and 30 RBI he slashed in 306, 397 and 667 with 12 walks. And in an characteristic 12 strikeouts. He also has 72 total bases in the National League. Bonds is 17th in batting average, 7th in hits. He's tied for 13th in doubles, 1st in homers, and RBI is 15th in runs scored, tied for 20th in walks, 11th in on base percentage, 4th in slugging, 4th in OPS, 1st in war. And he's 2nd to Soto in MVP voting. However, it's kind of weird. Because Bonds has more all-star votes than Soto, though he did finish 2nd in the National League Player of the Month race, don't worry about that Rookie of the Month thing because they still recognize Bonds as a rookie. That's all I got this time around. So if you like this video, leave me a like. I'm a real dude using an AI voice. Subscribe to my channel for more MLB The Show Vids and more Legend Locks.